Who doesn't love getting a great deal? All of you coupon cutters out there know what I'm talking about, right? And the savviest of you shoppers know that two-for-one deals are among the best bargains. Believe it or not, anatomy sometimes presents its own kind of special deals also. Two muscles for the price of one? Sounds like madness, right? Well, today we'll be focusing on a muscle which cashes in on one of these two-for-one deals, since it is actually comprised of two smaller muscles. This bargain of a muscle is called the iliopsoas, and today we'll be talking about all of its functions. Before looking at how this muscle functions as one whole unit, let's first break the iliopsoas down into its two components. Starting with the iliacus. As its name suggests, it originates on this large, broad, bony feature called the iliac fossa of the hip bone. From here, it tapers as it travels inferiorly, deep to the inguinal ligament, where it inserts at the lesser trochanter of the femur, located at the posteromedial aspect of the proximal femur. But as we've seen, this is only half of the picture for the iliopsoas, with the other half comprised of the psoas major muscle. The psoas major muscle originates medial to the iliacus or closer to the midline. Specifically, it usually arises from the vertebral bodies of T12 to L4 and their adjacent intervertebral discs, as well as the costal processes of all five lumbar vertebrae. Then the psoas major muscle travels inferiorly, joining the iliacus before inserting at the lesser trochanter of the femur. So even though the iliopsoas has several origins through both the iliacus and psoas major, it has one common point of insertion. There is one small additional muscle that's worth mentioning here, and that's the psoas minor. Although this muscle does not contribute to the formation of the iliopsoas, it does help assist with some of the actions of the iliopsoas that we'll look at later in this video. Like its big brother, the psoas minor originates from vertebral bodies, but this little guy only attaches to the vertebral bodies of T12 and L1. It then travels inferiorly to insert onto the pectineal line of the pubis, and this is important to keep in mind for later on. Since the psoas minor does not extend to the lower limb, it won't play any role in the actions of the lower limb that the iliopsoas performs. And now you may be wondering, but what joints does this muscle act on? Great question! Let's check it out. Lucky for us, this dichotomous muscle is going to perform all of its actions on one primary joint, which is the acetabulofemoral joint, more often referred to as the hip joint. Additionally, we'll also see how this muscle can manipulate the lumbar spine through the attachment of the psoas major. We have one last area to review before delving into the actions, and that's innovation. Both of the components of iliopsoas receive separate innervation before uniting, so we'll look at each muscle in isolation, starting with the iliacus. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.